The next type of social engineering I want to talk about is called tailgating. Tailgating is basically infiltration. You're going someplace you're not supposed to go. People are where they are not supposed to be. You're entering a building in the guise of legitimacy. Basically, bad guys rely on looking and acting the part. You'd be amazed what happens or how, how much you can get away with if you act like you're supposed to be there. You can get into facilities, you can get into buildings if you just act like you are supposed to be in that building. In fact, people will dress up as utility workers to get into facilities they shouldn't get into. And probably one of the most powerful ways, probably one of the groups of people that can get into any facility. Okay, when I was working at the Bureau, I would have to go through Quantico. Quantico, of course, is the home of the Marines. And so I would have to get in Quantico base and the Marines would be there at the first checkpoint. And then once I got to that checkpoint, I would have to go through the FBI police checkpoint before I got to the academy. So I had to go through all these checkpoints. The one group of people that could go past all of this were the pizza delivery guys. I mean, they pizza delivery guys can go anywhere, okay? They can go anywhere they want. You hold a pizza, you have free access to everything. And so this is what we're talking about, about infiltration, going places that you aren't supposed to go and people just let you go there. So how do you stop it? Because at the end of the day, we want to stop this stuff, right? The first one is to have multiple checkpoints. What happens is when you get past the initial checkpoint, when you get past the initial person who's supposed to be the guardian of that building or the guardian of that facility, everybody else assumes that everyone's supposed to be there that's there. You have to have multiple checkpoints, multiple locations where people are challenged to produce the correct authentication, the right credentials to continue to go through. You can use revolving doors or man traps. Back again, when I was working for the Bureau, I used to have to go to the Hoover Building in DC. And so you would have to go through your first checkpoint where they would check IDs, then you would go through the metal detector, and then you really weren't in the building itself proper. You really weren't in the facility itself, as it were. You had to then beep your card and this tube, the cylinder, it's kind of like um, banks for the drive through banks where you put the money and it goes, okay, except we didn't go, we just kind of walked in. So you'd present your badge, beep, and a door would open. You'd walk in, the door would behind you, and then another door would open and you could go through. This kept it so one person at a time could get through those doors, which prevented people from following others into the building. The next thing is escort all non-employees. If somebody doesn't work there, escort them. When I was working for the intelligence community, we had to have custodial staff, we had to have food staff, and so these people were not cleared to be really in the building. They had a low-level background checks, but they weren't security cleared, and so we had an entire contracting company that would walk these people everywhere, and I mean everywhere, like to the bathroom, okay? So escorts for all non-employees. And then finally assume that there's somebody in the building who's not supposed to be there, which means that you assume they're there and then you lock each section up. You lock each section down. Now it's funny, having worked for the Bureau and having worked for the intelligence community, we had these things in place. Working for a school, schools are notoriously horrible at this. And you would think after all those tragic events with school shootings, we would have gotten a clue. But yet, we're still clueless. You can walk around a school with very little problem nowadays, which is just a shame. Now, what's also kind of interesting about tailgating is, as I said, it's fairly simple to do. You just look like you're supposed to be there. And as I was presenting this to the FBI cyber guys, I was actually at Quantico before I started working for the Bureau. I was training the FBI guys. And I said, you know, even, even this facility, I bet I could get from the entrance all the way to this classroom. And they're like, no, 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 no. We're the FBI, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you know, we'll, we'll make a bet. Make a bet on it, okay, by lunch. And so I bet them for the entire week that I could get from the entrance all the way to the classroom without a badge, without being stopped. And they took the bet. 
And again, it was for lunch, so, you know, negligible amount. And yes, by the way, if you are happen to be from the FBI and you are watching this, I did talk about this in my entrance interview, still got my clearance and everything, so it's all cool. Unfortunately, they didn't make any changes about the security policy, but oh well. Anyhow, what I did was is I got an empty box. I got an empty cardboard box, and I sold it. First of all, I dressed appropriately. There's definitely an unofficial dress code, dress code to the bureau, and so I dressed like I was supposed to be there. I dressed like every other person who worked in the bureau, okay? So dress pants, dress shirt, tie, maybe a jacket sometimes, and I sold the box. The box was empty, but I sold that it was heavy, and I would plan my approach with another employee because you had a beep to get inside the building. And so I would walk with the box right in front of my chest where my ID badge would have hung. And I planned it perfectly where they would hold the door open for me. And then I would walk through the facility to get to the classroom. And I didn't walk like I was hiding. I walked and I was saying good morning to everybody. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. By the time the week was over, people knew my name. I knew their name. It was like, hey, Bob, hey, good morning. Oh, hey, Scott, blah, blah. It, we, I, for the entire week, I did this. The only time. The only time I was stopped was on the last day where I brought in donuts for the class, in which case I was stopped everywhere along the pathway because people were like, hey, you got donuts. But at that point, they already recognized me and they already thought that I was supposed to be there. So don't underestimate the power of tailgating. It's very powerful and assume, always assume somebody's in your building that shouldn't be there. Okay. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the problem with emails.